Mike, congratulations. Did you have any premonition that it would end this fast? My trainer told me before I left, we, I, bet, I, took, I bet both of our purses that you knocked him out in the first round. So I, had, and I thought he was serious, so just now he said he was lying. And so I went out and knocked him out in the first round. It seemed to... What did you... What did you hurt him with? How did it um, start? The first one was, I think it was... Um, a right, a right hand on top of the head, but he took it well. And then I hit him with a sh short left hook. Oh, it, was left it was a left uppercut. It was a left uppercut that you told me to throw. Right, right. And then I threw a right hand to the body. Right and went down. Went down from and then from that punch, I think what it was the right hand right off the hand head. Was like right hook over the top. It seemed to me that when he was hurt, his instinct as a champion, instead of covering up and running, was to fight back, and that's why you finished him. From what I know of human nature, there's only two things that he was capable of doing. Either running or stinking it out, or come out and fighting. I knew either he'd be scared and come out fighting. And that's what I thought. Maybe he was a little jittery, so he came out fighting, giving it his best, hoping for a knockout or a cut or something, because he was fighting very furiously, as you noticed. Mike didn't give him a chance to do anything else. So after the first knockdown, he got right on him and worked the body and then came out to the head again. That's what knocked him out. All right, what happened? What was all the delay about before? Do you think Michael just didn't want this to get here this quick? Well, I think he was um, trying to scrutinize with my brain and make me wait it out. But, you know, I was getting upset. I wanted to go. I'm the kind of guy who want to fight. Let's get in there and fight. I don't care who comes in first. We come in both at the same time. That's what we planned. We said, we come on together. And so my main objective was to go out there. Like I said, my, my trainer told me the whole purse is better on one round. Now I come back to collect my money, and he says he was joking. He didn't make the bet. <laughs> but it's still a good payday. <laughs> he think, all right, let's talk about the first knockdown. Describe it for me in your memory, because we don't have a monitor here right now. Well, I can't remember it much, because it was just a, it was so quick, a right hand. But my main objective was to come out here and take him out. Put the right possible. hand to the body. Put the right hand to the body. Uh, a, right, a left uppercut and a right to the body, my producer is telling me in my ear, is that what started uh, the beginning of the end. Did you think there was any way he could deal, not just with your punch, but with the pressure? Well, can I tell you, as you notice, I was, more, I was moving more, I was coming out with my jab more, I took it right to him. You know I mean? I, it was do or die I, I came into, you know, my perception was either do or die. That's what we came out to do. Was your perception of the fight that you're simply too strong for him? I, am, I was just all around a better fighter than he is. You know I mean, you could be strong, but the power doesn't have no no value unless you have means of landing it on the target. And as you know, he's very elusive, and he was throwing punches, and I was making him miss. And he didn't hit me with one punch. But no one said that though. I'm just a slugger. All uh, right, now in your now again in your memory because we don't have a, a monitor. The finish. You're a great finisher. What went through your mind when you saw that he was hurt, and then you went in for the finish? Well, I knew, when I, once I knew it was hurt, I knew all my punches were going to be precise and accurate pinpoint, and he wasn't going to survive the round. It seems that you didn't get over anxious, you were patient, and that you knew that the end was near. Before, before I came there, Durant came and visited me. You know what I mean? Durant is my number one hero, Roberto Durant. And he told me, he said, this guy's made the order for you. You have to relax. Don't chase him. You have to be calm and relax and punch to the body and throw combinations to the head. And that's what, what I plan to do, basically. But he knew the strategy, the way to fight him also. There was some concern because of all of the, the domestic and managerial chaos before the fight that maybe you would get too anxious. Well, like I say, I'm a professional. Whatever happens, the job has to be done. Professional you, fight. That's how do you feel talk. that this proves that like most long-term cha champions who have problems outside the ring, that you've now put that aside, that you can show that these kinds of things are not going to undermine you? Well, you know I mean, like I said, I'm a businessman. When it comes to business, I love fighting. And I mean, regardless of the situations outside of me, we deal with those later. But as far as my career, you know what I mean, there's no fighter like me. I was reading today, there was some fighters in the papers quoting, I don't like Mike Tyson because he's too cocky and he's arrogant. With all the fighters that said that, you know what I mean, I let them know, there's no fighter like me and I can beat any man in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And Brownsville! <laughs> All right! All right, for Brownsville, let's go to Ray Brownsville. Leonard, who's with the guy from St. Louis. Mike, another one on your belt, another notch. Was this harder than you anticipated? No, not at all, because I knew that he was going to come up, he was talking, and the way he was talking, I knew he was hyped. He was ready to go, and I knew I was the best fighter in the world. 20, 20 seconds into the fight, though, you've got him on the canvas. Do you think what's going on here, it's all over? No, I knew he wasn't hurt. Thank you. For, God bless you. I knew he wasn't hurt as bad as everybody thought him was. 
Because I didn't hit him with solid shots. What did you hit him with? I think it was the right hand, somewhat grazing. Yeah, and then you hit him on top of the head and he went down. Were you then surprised that he came back and he seemed no, to hit you I, with a good, pretty good left in I that round? When he got up, he meant Ben, that's the old man. <laughs> But did he, did that left hand shake you momentarily that he hit you within that round? He was throwing a great deal of hard punches, but I refused to go down. They didn't even phase me. After that round, it seemed that you had established that you were the guy, and now he was just there to hold on. Was that how it seemed to you in the ring? Absolutely. But still, he was sneaking some very hard punches in between that. So he was stronger than some people gave him credit for. Absolutely. Well, you have to think, when fighters come to fight the heavyweight champ of the world, like Ali, they, they automatically become better fighters. What happened in the fifth round that you saw? Was he, you knew that he was weakened enough after the fourth round that it was just a matter of, of time? Well, I knew I was going to get him. All right. Memories of, of Bone Crusher Smith passed through my mind. A guy who hugged you for 12 rounds. Well, no, I knew he wasn't, he wasn't about to hug him for 12 rounds because he was trying to impress his Englishmen out here. And I'm just convinced, you know what I mean? These fellas. How dare them challenge me with their somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. So that, in effect, though, didn't this show how much you have improved since Bone Crusher Smith, that you could chop him down the way you did? Well, eventually, we have 12 rounds. Hopefully, I wish there were 15 rounds, but the rules prevail for them to be 12, and we have to live by the rules. And I wasn't worried at all. So many months you haven't been in the ring. How does it feel to have finally got in here and do what you say you do great. best? It felt great. Being here and the people scream and yell, the people scream for him, it's motivating me more. What, can you, can you, can you tell me what, for, can you tell me what plans you have now, Mike? Well, at this particular time, right now, I'm just gonna go home and watch a movie called Lean On Me. <laughs> Don King, can you tell us, do you have any fights planned and with whom? I'm going to go with him to watch Lean On Me. And after we watch that, he's going to be talking about it at the post fight press conference. We'll be talking about guys like Jose Luis Rebalto or Carl Williams, somebody, because he wanted to get back in the ring again in May. So you're saying there's nothing actually planned now, but you are, you are thinking about several different options. New York! We're planning several different options, but we will be fighting in May. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you very much, Mike. Back to you, Jim. All right, once again, Mike, the interview has to be longer than the fight. I'm sorry about that. What happened in, from your point of view? Did you see him really dazed? Well, no, I, I, I noticed my trainers were telling me we were slipping and hooking. So when we slip, because usually I come in, I slip, and I get in there, and that's the hardest part of getting in there, and I never threw the punch. And so we were practicing, and you slip, and so you're in there, instantaneously, bing, throw the punch. And I did, and I was successful. What? Were you surprised that he stayed as on top of you as much as he did, that he didn't try to move? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I just knew it took it just for a matter of time. I loved it. So you knew that as soon as he was doing that, that you were going to get a clean shot sooner or later. Exactly. And my punches were accurate and pinpoint. And I knew eventually I was going to get him. He, had a re he has a reputation for getting hit with left hooks. Were you looking for that opening? No, um, I was very confident. I wanted to hit him, catch him with a good right hand. Um, believe my right hand is my favorite punch, but I never, I never catch anyone with it. You know, it's my best punch, and I always hit guys with left hook. All right, we're going to try to take a look at the, uh, Where's the monitor? At, the, at the monitor if we can find it, so that we'll, we can determine what happened. Champion number. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, it was a clean left hook. Did you? I mean, you, you, you sparred with him years ago. We know that it didn't mean anything. Uh, were you surprised that he went so fast? Well, no, I knew if I catch the one clean, they'll go regardless who they are. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? When the, when the referee, um, he hit him with a shot, it looked like he was able to get up, but I guess the referee called what he saw because I didn't, I didn't think he was hurt that bad, but I knew I hit him with a clean shot. Speculate for me. How long would it have taken you to get him down a second time if the fight went on? Oh, no problem. I'd have been all over him. Maybe it's better that the referee did stop early. I would have been all over him. That's when I'm most dangerously, when I know I have someone hurt. Um, for the record, uh, Mike, I don't know if you know it, this fight went a couple of seconds longer than the Sphinx fight. So, so far in this building, 
in uh, the last 13 months, you've uh, fought about uh, one round and two fights. Well, it's good. I like coming in this building. I like being here. And Donald Trump, he don't play around. He pays that money up. And for this fight, Don told me if I knock him out, he'll pay me 100 grand. And I'm looking forward to that 100 grand. Who? Don is going to pay for you? Don, Don really? King, yeah. <laughs> 100 grand for a knockout. All right. We all want to be there when that happens. When is this going to happen? <laughs> right. And the, the post press conference. Do I get to be? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. My church can use some of that yeah, money. Man. Yes. All right. Reverend Henry J. Uh, Payton, Holy Trinity Baptist Church. No doubt. Let's talk right. about, yeah, all right, now let's talk. You've, you've <laughs> talked about being in control of your career. Uh, tell us what you think is next. Who is next? Well, I'm just taking it one step at a time. I'll fight anybody, you know what I mean? I don't discriminate from anybody. I'm the best fighter in the world, and there's no man that All can right. beat me. Does this, mean, does this mean that Holyfield is or is not your next uh, opponent? Well, he's in my, my future, but I don't think he's in my immediate future. But come on, Holyfield, don't matter. That's kids play. So you think that you'll fight Holyfield like early next year and you may have one or two fights before then? Most likely, but you know what I mean? If they can discuss our things with their people, we can fight in two weeks, three weeks. He uh, caught a quick knockout, I got a quick knockout. We both still need to work. We didn't get any work. All right. Jose Ribalta was uh, one of the fighters being considered for your next opponent, and he had a dreadful outing in a preliminary tonight. Did that eliminate him? Well, it looks kind of dreary for him, but you never know. If he have a couple more fights and he cleans up his act, he's always a good prospect. What about Douglas, who uh, looked a little better, if not great, in another preliminary? He's been mentioned as a possible opponent. I take all comers. I don't duck any man. Uh, can we assume that Michael Dokes is one of the prospects? All comers. Come one, come all, because nobody can get close to me. They're not even close. I'm the best fighter in the world. There's been discussions that uh, today people from Israel have been offering you money to come and fight there. You've been reluctant to go abroad. Do you think that as a world champion, as someone who says I'm the best man on the planet, that you will start to fight abroad? Well, eventually we'll do that, you know what I mean? But like you said, I'm not in a hurry to leave my country. You know what I mean? I love my country. I'm not in a hurry to leave anywhere. But you know what I mean? If things are right, I'll fight anyone in any place in their backyard. <laughs> How would you describe uh, right now, you've got a lot of things past you, you've always been able to focus on fighting no matter what the other stuff uh, has, has gone on in your life. Are you uh, as content as you can be now with the situation that you I have? I want to fight, fight, fight and destruct the world because I'm the best fighter in the world. Thank you very much, Larry. Th thank you. <laughs> Jim? Mike Tyson has joined us now at ringside. Mike, a lot of people thought that maybe you had some questions to answer for yourself tonight. Were there questions in your mind? And if so, did you answer them? No, I didn't, I didn't have much doubt on the outcome of the fight. It's just that um, I was skeptical because I didn't give my best performance. You know what I mean? I had no idea that. I, I knew I was always the same person still. It's just that I was reluctant in the situation. And I wasn't professional. And that's not um, characteristic of me. How good did this performance feel for you? Well, it helps, you know, to come back, you got your win. It helps the confidence. But I, I want to fight as often as I possibly can. How much can you learn from two minutes and 47 seconds? There are some who would contend that maybe you should have taken a tougher opponent and stayed in the ring longer. Well, as you know, like as Ray know. Um, I'm already an experienced fighter. If I'd have went 10 rounds, I was good shape to go 10 or 15 rounds. I'm already an experienced fighter. It's just that I prefer to be more um, often active than I have been. Question, Ray? Well, I said earlier that, Mike, that you wanted to get this fight over with as soon as possible. Also, you know, there are people that say, well, it's not as formidable and this shouldn't be a problem. I thought it was an achievement because the fact of the matter is, because he was not considered a formidable opponent, that meant your mind had to be right. Absolutely. And the most... Um, when people tell me that this guy's going to be a pushover, that's when I worry. That's when I worry. Like, Buster Douglas wasn't supposed to be a pushover. Not making a big issue of it. By no doubt, I'm the best fighter in the universe, and I'm coming back to regain the title. Will it satisfy you to come back in three months against the likes of an Alex Stewart, as appears to be the plan? Perhaps two months. I'm, I'm in great shape. I can fight anyone in the world. Do you think world. that you made a mistake in the past by not fighting as frequently as you had in the period leading up to when you won the title? Absolutely. People, you know, you, you're put to a claim that all my personal problem. They say, well, he overcame the personal problem. He's still fighting. He's going through the war. But it's not the personal problem. It's the aftermath of the personal problem that really um, catches up because of the, the activity part. You know, you have to, in our business, Ray knows, you have to stay active. You know what I mean? The situation where he was in, he was dropping. You know what I mean? Active. If he was active, that would never happen. Because, as you know, Ray Lay is the best fighter of his generation. Did you see Foreman against Adelson Rodriguez? I didn't watch anything. My main concern was the comment finish off Henry Tillman. 
All right, Evander Holyfield is going to get the first shot against Buster Douglas. How much is it going to bother you if you had to wait several more months, perhaps even a I'm, year or I'm more? I'm going to stay active, but regardless of the issue, it's going to be a tough fight. And after the tough fight, the winner got me. Anything else, Ray? Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you, Ray. Right. Congratulations, Mike. I should point out that Mike put Ray and me in a little bit of an awkward position tonight because he preferred to be interviewed by us rather than by Larry Merchant, whose custom it would have been to do that interview. comes Mike Tyson to join us now at ringside. Congratulations on victory number 39. You came out with fury, to say the least. Knocked him down in the first 10 seconds of the round. If I can get you to turn toward the camera a little bit, Mike. How important was it to you to score a first round knockout tonight? Well, I mean, I knew he was a dangerous fighter once he got warmed up. And my objective, I was in great shape. He used to go in there and put the pressure on him for 10 rounds. I knew I had to break him eventually. You appear to be in sensational condition. Do you feel considerably differently now than was the case 10 months ago in Tokyo? Absolutely, because my mind is more prepared. You know, I mean, that's what basically the whole standpoint came down to, is being um, prepared mentally. How does your situation compare now to what most people would regard as the peak of your career when you knock Spinks out here in 91 seconds? Well, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't feel like it was a sustained shoot of night tonight because there's things that I know that I did that were mistakes. But, you know what I mean? A good fight, and I'm in good shape. And I just like to thank all my fans on HBO that's been supporting me. But I just like to say this is my last fight on HBO. It's because HBO, they think that you'd rather see Holyfield than me. Thank you for supporting me. I love you all. Bye. Mike, one final question. How important at this moment is the coming arbitration with regard to the WBC championship and the possible WBC title fight with Ruddick? Well, it really don't matter, as long as I can fight for the title. I, I, love, I love to fight Ruddick. I want to show everybody he's not the baddest man in the world they once said he is. Would you rather fight the winner of Foreman Holyfield? Excuse me? Would you rather fight the winner of Foreman Holyfield? I would fight anyone, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for the moment. It looks like Ruddick might be in the, in the wings, and I'm looking forward to fighting Ruddick. Can you elaborate on why you feel you've been treated unfairly by this network, which will state that it has two offers on the table for you for long-term deals? I have no comment. I don't want to talk about no. The, the, the company know what they did, and I'd like to say hello to all my troops again that have been supporting me. I'm out of here. We've enjoyed covering you. Thank you very much. Hey, Bernie. All right. We're up, we're up. Iron. Iron Mike Tyson. You, did you think you should have been allowed to finish him off? Well, you know what I mean? I can't control the referee's decision because he's being more objective than I am because he's not involved. But I would love to hurt him and finish him and put him out. How was he punching? Was it hurting like him? He punches like a fucking meal kick. Unbelievable. Excuse my French, please. Oh, my God. I'd like to say one thing. I'd like to say congratulations to Sheila Holloway and my newborn nephew, Michael Paris Holloway. Thank you. And to my, Do you my think son, you... the model... Let, the let's, model take, let's take a look. Let's, I'm coming on, baby. Let, let's take a look at the, the model. World. Let's take a look at and, and what you watch. You tell me what you're looking at here. These were your series of punches boom, that got him in boom. trouble. He's in trouble. The boy was hurt. The boy was hurt. I couldn't. I was trying to catch him right there. The whole guy. He was hurt pretty bad. But I would love to finish. He's at the moment where he's but, really hurt. But you see, he still can talk, and he's still on his feet, and he's still conscious. Really, I think that that's premature because you should have been allowed to finish him if you could. I believe so also, but I can't make judgment for Richard Still. He's an experienced referee, as you know, probably the most experienced in the world. And who am I to make judgment to him? I can't judge him because I'm not his peer. Two things came out of this. One, you're back. Yes. Two, Razor Ruddick is one of the top contenders oh of the world. Oh, my God. He punches so hard. He punches so hard. Oh, a couple of times he hurt me, but I refuse to be hurt. I refuse. And when I'm right, my, my chin is like concrete. No one can stop me. Yeah, how about Holyfield? Now this this is out of the way. You passed your test. Holyfield next. I would love to. I would fight anyone. You know what I mean? It's up to my promoter, Don King, Marad Mohammed. Butch Lewis, they put the matches together. You know, it would not be a bad idea to fight this guy back. Unbelievable. He I would it. love to have another fight with him. I would love to. He, de he deserves it. Rematch for Ray the Ruddy. All right. There you have Iron Mike Titan back to Steve Albert at ringside where it's much quieter than it is in the ring. He's looking to join... Ruddick and Tyson, here's the fight. Put on a fight, heavyweight fight, the likes of which I haven't seen in a long time. Mike, you're coming. Well, I feel good, you know what I mean? I was, I wouldn't even let that embarrass me when people wrote those articles, but anyway, I knew I was in a tough fight. People thought, you know, they were saying three wives. I knew I was in a tough fight, and I knew he felt confident heavier. 
you had to have a hell of a heart to come back from some of those shots. This guy hit you some major shots. Hey, man, that's what it's all about. And and you have got to have some kind of award from getting up from knockdown smiling. You must have the record of getting up smiling from knockdown. You better than crying. <laughs> Listen, the the, uh, the low blows and all those points, how do you guys feel about taking that many points? Does it confuse things? No, I'm just fighting. I don't think about the, the points. Business, yeah. you know, sometimes they usually he keeps his belt up pretty high. Yeah. But you know what I mean? What the hell? You know, well, you're a small guy. He's a talk. He didn't complain. I didn't complain. I got hit. I didn't complain. He didn't complain. The referee took the points. Do you feel you got a fair shake from the referee and from the official? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I tried my best today. and um. Uh, I should have put out a little bit more, but um, I can't have to give Mike Hardy. Mike, the so many times we talk, the referee stopped the fight the first time. Don't, don't go away. The referee stopped the fight the first time. Had it gone, continued to go on, it could have been like this. I mean, it could have gone on and on that last time. Can I tell you something? Nobody knew because eventually, you know, you know I me. Mean? Tell you, you know we got to fight again eventually. We got to fight again. Yeah. Well, that's very admirable for you to say that after a day like this. What do you think about this oh, little? Definitely, definitely. I'd like to say hi to Jamaica and Canada. And I did my best. I'm sorry I didn't get the win, but next time I think I will get the win. The weight, the weight. Did it bother no, you? I think it made me stronger. It made me stronger this time around. All right. You, you put a, a quietus. You're even mad at me. You're mad at the press. Listen, don't be mad at everybody. They're trying to do the best for you. He's What's next for you? And they're not uh, trying to do I the best know, for Don. Him. They're not trying to do the best for him, and he's not mad at everybody. We just yeah. won. We got two great heavyweights. Now, Razor Ruddick is the, the two best heavyweights in the world. I, call, I thought that the, the referee was a little bit on, a little bit not right. You won't say it, Bertie, but you say you always speak up, but you're holding your tongue now. I have you not. You didn't hold your tongue. I have the last time. I did. Last time you didn't hold your tongue. I want to see you speak up now like you've been speaking up. I'm getting body right. shots. Here, now help you're me. getting some shots because you ain't doing I'm waiting to, to referee, the, uh, interview the referee. Okay, give me a moment. Right. Give me a right. moment. I got Mike Tyson here. I'm going to give you a moment. All right. Let's have Mike Tyson. Let's be fair, Bertie. Don't play this game. if you have this kind of a fight, do you think it gets you in the condition you need for Holy? Uh, yeah, absolutely, you know what I mean? Absolutely. We don't want Holy. But can I tell you something? I just hope this guy don't forget because before the great fight, go out there and let him lose to somebody, make a mistake and lose. Because, God, boy, you got a future. All right. Thank you from two warriors and from a distraught Don King. And now we will find it's the Lonesome Dove. Where is Holy? Get me the referee here. I, I, there was a, a, let's go back to Steve right now at rings. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Mike, your thoughts on your uh, return to the ring, as short as it was? I was just um, happy to be in there. And I pray, I give all praise to God. And there's only one God, and Prophet Muhammad, and peace be all unto him, is the messenger of God. And I'm just happy he blessed me with this victory today. The fight ended so quickly and seemingly not the way that anybody wanted to see it end. Were you surprised that the uh, Vecchione came in and stopped it? Well, um, I'm really not surprised at anything. I'm just, he came out punching and he was winging. I knew it would just be a matter of time before I catch him. Did you do a little better than you thought right off the bat? I was just, I'm always thinking about fighting the best, and I always put the best fight. Every time I'm in a fight, fight, I just anticipate fighting the best fight. I never underestimate. I'd done that one time, and I came up titleless. This happened so quickly. Can you really gauge what kind of a test this was, or was it over so quick that you can't tell? As you know, as soon as, I came, as, soon as the bell rang, he just came at me, and I didn't have too much time to anticipate anything, so I just went with instinct and just start throwing punches. I was um, basically planning on countering him, just making a miss and punch. He was very awkward. He kept his head down, so it was very difficult to hit him. He whispered into your ear extensively. He talked to you for about 45 seconds. What was it that he said to you? Um, it, it was more gibberish, and I didn't hear much, but... Um, He's a good person. You kind of like him, don't you? You didn't develop that anger that sometimes you've had in the past. You kind of, there was something about him you liked, wasn't it? He's just a business. He's a very likable individual. I mean, most fighters are very likable. It's just unfortunate we're in the business that we're in. Mike, tell us about your walk into the ring, the anticipation, just this whole day, and go through it with us if you can, uh, finally getting back into the ring after four years. Um, yes, I owe everything. Praise be to Allah. And I bless Allah to thank very much for my trainers. They worked hard. They were patient with me. Um, very difficult training, but I came through, and hopefully we start right back and await the next fight. Are you in a hurry for a title shot, or what do you I'm, plan to do? I'm just enjoying myself now. I'm just enjoying myself, fight by fight, staying busy, and hopefully um, I receive some good blessings from. Are you surprised at all at your popularity? It seems as though you've become more popular now than you were four years ago. Well, they should they should love me because I'm a Muslim and I love God more so than just because I'm a celebrity and I'm throwing good punches. There's some controversy now back in the ring uh, from what's going on with Mills Lane and so forth. What did you personally think of the stoppage? Would you have liked to knock him out, knock him down, or, or did you think it was fine and the kid could have gotten hurt? Well, he, eventually he would have got hurt. As you know, I'm, I'm a blood man. I like to finish it. 
and they stopped it. You know what I mean? It's all, all praise be to God. It happened for a reason. I don't have no qualms about anything. November 4th, you're not sure who yet? I'm just oh, be fortunate and happy and praise God that I'd be able to make it. Gentlemen, thank you, Mike. Congratulations, Rory, John. Let's go back outside to Ferdy Pacheco. Mike, Mike, did you did you expect him to come straight at you the way he did? Did you expect him to try and crowd you and walk into your I power? Expect, I expect him to do um, many things. I expect him to move around, run because he's able to do that, and I expect him um, to smother me because he's been very successful. But I'm very familiar with his style of fighting. I was raised, and I'm the best at that style of fighting. I knew every move he was making. That's how come when I when I did a couple of particular moves, he was he was stunned. He didn't expect them. We're going to lead you into a replay here. I want you to call it for us when you see it. We're going to put it up here on the monitor in a couple of seconds. Be a replay of the knockout. As you know, I made the move and I caught him. And I tried to catch him again. Then I caught him off the top of the head again. Then there's another one. The Jets glance really didn't hit him as hard as I anticipated to hit him. But I knew those punches would, would, would probably knock him out or uh, hurt him severely because he didn't see the punches coming. You, you promised the people here in Philly something they wouldn't forget. I'm sure they didn't forget it. They gave you a great greeting when you came in. They received you very warmly. What's next? Is it Frank Bruno in March? Well, all praise be to Allah. I bear witness there's only one God and Muhammad, the prophet. Peace and blessings upon him is his only prophet. And um, I'm just looking forward to doing well. I don't care who it is. I'm looking forward to fighting anybody. And I don't know about my outcome today, but, you know I mean, I'm looking forward to fight for the title. I'm, I'm willing to fight any man. I'm not afraid of anyone. I believe I'm the best fighter in the world. And I like to say I love Monica. I love Gina. I love the little, our little baby Raina and Mikey. Mwah. All right, Mike, Family. I've been saying for three years the best heavyweight is finally back on the scene. God bless you. Good luck, pal. Thank you. Don, what is next, Don? That was a heck of a finish, but are you back? Well, I still always have room for more improvement, and I'm, I'm my own worst critic. Praise be to Allah. This title is for my dear mentor, Customato, my children, Mikey, Gina, Raina. Praise be to Allah. I, you said you could keep on going. When I came up, you said I could have done some more. Were you having that much fun? I could. Yeah, I was Let's take a look at the monitor. This is a finish, Mike. Now, it's super slow. You talk. As you see, I'm just throwing punches because he's holding a lot. So I'm just throwing, crushing to the wind. My objective is to throw at all times, just to throw punches, throw punches, bring him down with a Henry Armstrong effect, so to speak. Boom, that hurt him. He's out right now. And I'm trying to catch him again. Don't stop. But I missed him. Don't stop. And they're going to keep coming. Boom, there you go. And there's another one. The best ever. The best ever. The best ever. Well, champ, that's what they call finishing in boxing. You are one of the great finishers in boxing. Well, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm constantly improving. I like to say one thing to all my people in IYC, everyone, the Islamic service, uh, vice lords, folks, regiments, all the people that was good to me, Mr. Sla Mr. Slavin, Mr. Flimster. God praise be to everybody. All right. Oh, whack off. Champ, one last question. Bruce Selden, is he next? Whoever's next, I'm Bruce, scared. you want Bruce or anybody? I, I, I'll fight anybody Don King put in front of me. And I, I just got, I have, still have more to do and I have more improvement to do. I wasn't right. my best. Well, Champ, from one guy to the other, welcome back. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's go with Gray. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right. Mike Tyson, one, one minute, certainly. One of your fastest, I think, outside of McNeely. Um, all praise be to Allah. I bear witness there's only one God, and Allah that God, and Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. And custom auto, we got two down, one to go. Now, we're looking at slow motion, and uh, we're going to show you the whole round uh, as soon as we can see it. Here, here we go. And you can watch a right hand punch. It seemed like an elbow hit him as well as, well as a punch. Well, I, I'm All right, this is the whole fight. Go. Um, I'm just trying to basically um, set him up, put my jab out there and set him up and try to cut him off. You see I'm cutting him off pretty well though. Slipping punches. The jab never kept you off? No, but it was a penetrating jab. It was very hard. It hit me in the head a couple of times and I felt the power of it. And I was just trying to uh, be elusive enough and move. I had, to, I had pretty good anticipation, so I moved just enough time and the punch doesn't miss me by much. I just, by a tenth of a second, the punch goes over my head before I'd be in position to punch. And if it missed me from so far, I wouldn't be able to punch, like right there. 
But I'm, I'm punching pretty hard these days. I punch harder than I did when I was younger. Uh, are you satisfied? With, you're, not, you're not crouching as much as you did when you were very young. You're crouching, Bob and Weave. You're coming in pretty straight up here. But I'm looking. I'm crouching, but I'm, I'm, I'm a tested look. Now, now you are. Like you see the guys behind me being biased over here. You know what I mean? Let us handle our business. <laughs> go ahead. Go they ahead. love me. Yeah. And I'm just looking to set the punch up, setting the punch up. And he's jabbing and moving pretty well. And I, and I needed that in my life. I needed someone to move because most fighters are fighting that way. But he was fighting as he was moving. He was throwing hard punches. Now, did you think that punch was going to knock him down? It was high well, in the head. It was a hard punch. Yeah. And I, had, and I kind of hit him with my elbow as well. <laughs> yeah. It was a strange punch, but he did go down flat. I mean, he just plop. Now, he got up, he wasn't in the greatest shape. Did you, did you sense you could just finish this? Oh, well, you know, that's my, my, my um, M.O. Once I get the man hurt, everything's is reckless abandon. That was just one left hook. Well, praise be to Allah, he got up and he's safe. Now, watch what he does. Yeah, that silliness of, of the crowd is hollering, fix it. Guy gets hammered twice, hey. almost under the canvas. They think it's a fix. Yeah, right. It's the same thing that happens anytime. It happened to Joe Lewis. It happened to anybody who knocks out people in one round. That's tough luck. They don't like it. That's the way that is. Listen, you're on Great. your way to ring immortality. I know I said before, the pressure you put on yourself is worse than anybody else because yeah, you want to be an immortal. Yeah. And I think you're on the way. Holyfield stands in your way. That's got to be a nice fight. I look forward to it. Praise be to Allah. I'm going to do well, and I don't think there'll be no problem. Holyfield is in for a lot of trouble. Thank you very much. It's always good. Now to Jim Gray. Mike, can you give us your assessment of what happened there, Mike, in this fight? Um, All right. I really wasn't aware of what happened, but um, he, threw, he, he fought a good fight. Are you all right now, or are you still a little bit out of it? I'm okay. My, my eye hurts a little bit, but I'm fine. A lot of your corner here has been complaining about the headbutts. Were you headbutted by Evander Holyfield? Well, he headbutted me, but I probably headbutt him too. Well, did you take this fight a little bit lightly? Did you maybe overlook Evander Holyfield? Um, he's just a good fighter, and I take my hat off to him. All of the bad blood that existed before, truly this was a fight of a lot of respect. Is that now gone, and would you look forward to a rematch? I look forward to a rematch with anybody, yes. Mike, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay. Here are the two headbutts. First, I'm sorry, Mike. Let's let's take a look at this monitor right here and give us your assessment of what happens here. And I'm jabbing. Boom, boom. And then right there, I believe I've been headbutt. Did that cause the gash on your eye? I believe so. I'm not sure. In the sixth round when he rocked you, were you surprised when you went down? Um, say it again. Were you surprised when you went down in the sixth round there? Did he catch you with a clean punch? Yeah, he hit me with a pretty good punch. That's the second one a bit later on. Now, that didn't seem to hit the high, but clearly you looked as though you responded like that was a headbutt, was it? I believe so. I'm looking at the camera. It looked like it was a headbutt. Mike, can you assess your future now? What would you like to do? You, you want a rematch? Um, yes, I would. He fought, a, he fought a good fight, and I look forward to another one. Did four minutes of fighting over the course of five years catch up with you? Did the rust maybe tonight finally catch up with your layoff? Um, I don't know. The guy, he fought a good fight. And I'm not a guy to make um, excuses. Are you astonished by Holyfield's performance? Um, I wasn't really aware of the performance. I have to probably review it on tape, make a better assessment of it. Mike, we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Good luck next time. Feel better. Let's go down ringside. All right. Thank you, Steve. I'm now joined by Mike Tyson. Mike, first of all, let's go in chronological order. The headbutt in the second round. Uh, the headbutt in the second round, which opened the gash on your eye. Tell us about that first, please. Um, he butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again in the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him. He had me holding, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for, and he kept going for me, and he butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he t charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave him, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Like I got children to raise, and this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. Now, immediately, you stopped. You stopped fighting immediately right there and you turned to Mills Lane and you said what and he the result was he did nothing but what did you say to Mills right at that time I don't remember what I said I told him that he butt me but I know I complained about being butted and we go and we complained about the um the first fight listen Holyfield is not the tough warrior everyone says he is he got little nicks on it there and he quit I got an eye I got one eye 
I got one eye, he's not impaired, he got ears. I got one eye, big deal, if he take one, I got another one, I'm ready to fight. He didn't want to fight, I'm ready to fight him right now. Yeah, Mills Lane, no, Mills Lane stopped the fight, it wasn't Holyfield who stopped the oh, fight. Oh, he didn't want to fight, he let didn't want to fight. Let me ask, let me ask. We don't know what Mills did, don't, don't put nothing okay, on Mills. Okay. Well, Mills said he stopped the fight, you bit him, was that a retaliation for the eye? when you bit him in his ear. Regardless of what I did, he bit me for two fights. But you got to address it, Mike. Why I did, did you address, No, I did address it. I addressed it in the ring. Well, why, why did you do that, though, Mike? I mean, was Look that the proper me. response? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got to go home. My kids are going to be scared of me. Look at me, man. What are you going to do now in terms of your career, Mike? Well, you continue to fight. Very much respect, brother. Okay, okay. That's the story from back here. Let's send it back out to you, Steve. All right, thank you very much. Mike, congratulations on this fight. How difficult was this fight for you, and how much rust do you feel you had? A tremendous amount of rust. But, Mike, I've been training with um, Tommy Brooks for so damn long, I'm tired of seeing his face. <laughs> and um, I was just calm. I told my trainer that I said, I'm going to catch him late. I'm going to catch him late. Just take it easy. I'm going to catch him late. But my trainer knew because he'd been training all day. The other guys, Stacey McKinley and them, got a little excited. But I was okay. I knew what was happening. Mike, the eye in the first round. Very reminiscent of what happened to you with the Evander. It started to bleed. Were you concerned? Well, I'm a better fighter now than when I fought Evander. Were you concerned about the eye? Though, no, not the at all. Not at all. Because I knew in matter of time I had 10 long rounds. Okay. I'm not a first round knockout no more. I put them together. Now tell us about what happened in the incident at the end of the first round. Um, he kept holding me and I kept twisting him around. And his arm got caught in my arm, so I hold it there. And um, he was holding Thanks for me. not demonstrating. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> he was... Um, he was just holding me, and I was lucky enough to get a shot to knock him out. I like to give um, happy birthday to Custom Model. Tomorrow's his birthday. Tomorrow's my Muhammad Ladi's birthday. Ah, I'm talking. What did Ali say to you? He Listen, said something no. to you when he whispered to you yesterday. Tell us what you said. You just brought he up. He said, Ali. "Go to bed and go to sleep. Get some rest." All right, I like no, no, no. I want to say hi. I like to say hi to some Brooklyn Warriors that passed away. My brother Arkbark, my brother LD, and my brother Tweety. Let's get along, brother. Allahu Akbar. I love you all. One love. All right, Brooklyn let, let, rule. Let's, let's, Top of the food chain. We'll give you all this time that you want. Now, l l let me just ask you one other thing about that incident. Do you feel that both of us trying to bait you into snap? Yeah, he was talking a lot of um, smack and stuff. But it's cool. He was a good fighter. But um, I'm working with some great trainers. I had a great training camp. It's a matter of time. Talk to my trainer. Tell him what I was telling you, man. Tommy, what, how much of a different fighter? Tommy Brooks, stay with us, Mike. How much of a different was, fighter is he from what he, was, you went against him with Holyfield? I was a little worried at first because he went out and he st just listen. He started looping his punches. When he came back to the corner, I told him, you got to throw your straight punches. We've been working for two and a half months on working at the, uh, firing at the body. He's, he was head hunting. You know? He was unable to put together any combinations. Exactly. Does that concern you for the next fight? Uh, not really. He learned his lesson tonight. He learned his lesson tonight. He knows that I'm not going to tell him anything wrong. Once we set a fight plan, you got to stay with the fight plan. We're looking, we train for 10 rounds. If it happened early, just like he just did, you know, but he has to throw straight punches. He came out, he's looping punches. Then he settled down, he starts throwing straight punches. And that's where it's over with. Mike, let me ask you, it's been two and a half years since you won a fight. Did you ever start to doubt your abilities? Oh, listen, everybody talks and say, Mike, I read these guys tell you I'm losing confidence because I'm talking loud and vulgar. I'm, to, I'm talking vulgar because I'm angry of what I've experienced all my years through this boxing. And I'm just angry. And everyone else has a right to be angry too, but that's just how I express myself. Are you going to be more diplomatic in the future? Are you going to lose some of this anger? No, I need respect. If you show me respect and stop writing trashy articles about me, then I'll show you respect. I'm a man. I listen. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to waste my life because when I die, I'm going to paradise. And I'm not worried, so I'm in a hurry to die. But no one's going to disrespect me, and no one's going to write nonsense about me without me retaliating back. What, what do you mean? What, what do you mean you're ready to die? Can no, you clarify no, that? No, no. And in all due respect, I'm saying we got. They try to assass assassinate my character and get my judges, the judges in Indiana upset, and the judges in Maryland upset. I'm a man, and I can only take so much. And I'm not going to sit back and take so much punishment. I'm a human being, and I need love just like everyone else. You can't talk about me and disrespect me. I have children, too. All right, let's take a look at the end of the round one right here. We have Francois both here. Guys, tell us what went on. Go ahead, Mike. This is the end of the round. Well, he was hitting me, and he, and, and he, was, and he was hitting me after the and talking, and so I twist my, his body, and I twist his arm. Francois, give us your version of what happened here. Uh, I just remember Mike, you know, Mike held my left hand, and uh, it was twisting my arm. And I just, I, I mean, you know, he just called me the right. And then in round two here, you lose a point, Mike. Yeah, was that deserving? Sure. Sure. You didn't mind that? No. It's a long fight. I got Franc time. Francois, were you trying to bait Mike tonight? Were you trying to yeah, get him to snap? Were you yeah, talking yeah, to him was, as he puts I it? I mean, Mike knew it. You know, I, I was. 
I mean, uh, I mean, you know, I just tried to bait him in, and uh, I walked right into it. I mean, it's a, it's a, he's a, he's a great fighter, and. Uh, okay. You, Here's the knockout, Mike. Tell us about the knockout here. Boom. Oh, you wait on, just like we've been. Were you just looking for the one punch? I, no, well, I, I saw him come. I was telling my trainer, and my trainer got a little bit, not much. He probably was excited, but he wasn't showing me. And I said, it's, it's a long fight. I'm working on. I'm slowing him down. He told me he was breaking. Mike, what'll be next? Let's bring in Shelly Finkel as well. Shelly, what what will be next? The manager uh, and, and confidant. Know, he's my advisor. I don't know what's next. I just need some fights. Right. I need to put on better shows, and I'm just um happy that Francois gave me a chance to fight for the number two ranking. And I I listen. I'm not looking to jump into the mix real quick. I got to go one step at a time, and just work. Go back to the gym and start working right away. Will you continue to fight in in three months? Will you will you stay busy or will well, you take like, a layoff? I would like no. I how listen. I gotta take care we'll of myself. Mike, congratulations, Shelly. Let's bring in you. Maybe you have an. All right, another night, another Tyson night. Give me your view of what happened. Did you throw the punch after you heard the bell? Well, you know, you were there. You saw it. It was simultaneous with the bell, and the punch wasn't that devastating. He could have continued. He quit on his stool, but I'll take him again in my next fight. I'll fight him right away. Well, let's fight him in December. I'd love to. All right, let me ask you something. How could a blow to the jaw hurt his knee? <laughs> Listen, all right. I you, he knew the next round I was gonna put that heat on him, and he wasn't ready for that heat. Yeah, that's right. All right, right. Yeah, Shelly, can they do something legally to screw this up? Can they no. go talk disqualification? No, they did already. They ruled it a no contest. It shouldn't have been that, but they did. We're ready to go back whenever Mike wants, and Mike said immediately. Your disappointment, I'm sure, was great. You've trained well. You're ready for a good fight. You're ready to come back in December against anybody. I feel great, and I just want to continue to fight one fight at a time and fight around four more fights and fight for the championship. Yes, sir. All right. If this so happens that it falls at December, you could fight this guy again. Would you be willing, Shelly, to oh, fight Carlos Norris? Of course. Uh, not me. Mike would fight him. No, but you're... you're... <laughs> All right. Sure. Let, 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 hey, we, you and I have been around a long time together. You feel your snake bit or something? Every time something happens. God, every time you come up here, something crazy happens. Well, listen, all praise be to Allah. I don't want to dwell on this anymore. I just want to say hi to my friend, the Smith family out there in, in, in Gilbert, Arizona. I like to say hi to Tiger Woods. We trained together with Keith Clevin, and he did it, and I wanted to score another knockout because you were successful. And I like to say hi to my friend Chuck Zito and get well soon. I love you, brother. Peace. All right. I think that uh, helps everybody else. Let's go back to Steve Albert at ringside. All right, thank you very much. I'm joined by Mike Tyson. Mike, you knocked him down five times. What did you expect coming into this fight of Julius Francis? All praise be to Allah. I bear witness there's no God but Allah. I'd like to thank Mr. Jack Straw for inviting me over to his country and taking all the slack for me. And I just like to say um, I love my children, Mikey, Raina, Gina, and Amir. I'm coming home. I love you. See you soon, Monica. Um, now, what you were saying? <laughs> what did you expect of this fight? You knocked him down five times. What did you well, expect listen, of Francis? I knew he was in front of his hometown. I knew he was going to try to show a lot of heart. But my objective was to go in there and just bang him out. I wanted to work his body. The last punch really was more of a body punch than anything. How would you assess where you are in your comeback now, Mike? It's been seven rounds in the past year. I don't know. Long way to go, but I'm still trying. And um, When you say a long way to go, you mean a long way to go to fight for a title or to be in, in good shape or where? Probably to fight for a title. I wish I looked as good. I felt as good as everybody said I looked. But um, I just like to thank my staff, um, all my sparring partners. I trained hard for this fight. I was in great shape. I was prepared to go the whole 10, 15 rounds, whatever it was. Um, I love you, Shawnee. Too bad you couldn't come. Donnie Sintel, X1, K Bourne. Mike, go ahead and wipe your nose for Florida a second. Kim. Wipe your nose for a second. You got some stuff coming out of there. And I like to say the problem that me and you had, I'm a big enough man to squash it and be your friend. I was a little biased because I love Pete Rose and I was very upset about the, um, the confrontation the you and Pete Rose had. I appreciate that, Mike. Mike, let me ask you. The experience here in Great Britain, they treated you over here very, very well, much better than you're treated back home. How do you feel about the experience here? Will you come back and will you continue this world tour? Listen, um, I'm an American. I'm going to continue my world tour, but I'm, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York and Catskill, New York, and uh, those are my hometown. And I love in Europe, and I think the next couple of fights I'm gonna have is in, will be in Europe. Finally, Mike, the fans would like to know, I'm sure, a legitimate opponent, a recognizable name. Is that gonna be in the plans next? Who is next? Uh, I'll fight anyone Shelly Fink will tell me to fight. Thank you. Thank you. you know what? I gotta say that your mom punches hard, for real. <laughs> Thank you. Are you okay? 
Yeah, yeah, I am now. The body shots were the thing, weren't they? You were very courageous tonight. You hung in there and lasted around. Did you do as well as you thought you would? Well, no, obviously not, because I, I believe I could come here and win. You know, that's what I believe. You know what I'm saying? I believe I could, I could win the fight. Thank you for having us over here, Mike. Finally, you say whoever Shelley says to fight. Can you give us a name or two, Mike? Shelley, we got you here while Mike turns around and gets some congratulations. Working, I don't have anything lined up. When Mike comes back, we're going to sit down and discuss it. We have a goal to win the title this year. Any thoughts on who you might want to fight next, Mike? Um, uh, it doesn't matter. It's whatever Shelley says. Sign him up. Mike, thank you. Congratulations thank you. tonight. Okay. Good luck to you. We always have been. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Steve. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Steve. Mike, was that your shortest fight ever? I bear witness there's only one God, and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is his prophet. I dedicate this fight to my brother, Darrell Baum, who died. I'll be there to see you. I love you with all my heart. All praise be to my children. I love you. Oh, oh God, oh, man, what? Is this your shortest fight ever? In any time, amateur, professional ever? Assalamu alaikum, Maida. Um... I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis, Lennox, I'm coming for you. Mike, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this in seven I didn't or eight train seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight, I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claws. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike? Mike? All right, Steve, you guys could decipher that, and uh, we'll move on from. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Mike, congratulations. You have not fought in one year. How would you assess your performance? You're not even breathing hard. I've been training in the gym for a long period of time, putting a lot of rounds of boxing, and I'm just um, all praise be to God that, uh, that he made me healthy enough to perform well. And I like to say, I love all my children, my family, Sean, Monica, Maida, everyone. Um, I'm back, and I just look forward to fight again. He was a tough guy. It was hard to hit him, but it was good I got those seven rounds. Yeah. You needed the rounds. You've only had 14 rounds in the past five years, Mike. I want to ask you, uh, the assessment might be that people think you should have knocked Brian Nielsen out. However, would you say that this is your best fight in five years? Well, Didn't you give me your opinion. Out. What do you think? I would think it is. What do you think? Well, I put up a good fight. He was tough. He was game. I look forward to do better in my next fight, and all praise be to God. Mike, at what point now, you said you wanted to take it slow before you went after the championship. It's been a real slow process. Are you ready now to attempt to fight either Rockman, Lewis winner? Well, when I fight those guys, I probably have to train a little harder and probably two more fights and I'll be ready for the championship of the world. Right. Two more fights, but will it be a quicker timetable? Because you're almost running out of time, aren't you, with the clock? Oh, no, I feel great. I'm doing Morning great. Now. I'm working great, and I'm getting better at time. 40 pounds, 240 is what you weighed in. 238, uh, 238 239, whatever it was. Maybe the scale was a, a little bit off, but it's 17 pounds heavier than your last fight. Was that your intention? Well, he's a big guy, and I wanted to put on more weight to put more leverage in my punching, and it was successful in doing so. I was laying hard shots, and he was taking them, and I was saying, God, when, I, when he came to the ring, I said, man, you shouldn't have quit. You should have kept fighting, man. You were putting on a hell of a fight. Mike, when you say two more fights, who exactly would you like to face before those guys? Well, I don't know anyone. I'm just looking for my man, um, Shelly, Shelly Finkel. I'll make the arrangements, and I'm just looking forward to it. Will you step up the competition? Will it be somebody, uh, a, a Tua, uh, a Holyfield, somebody who, who people have heard of and can recognize? We'll Probably one speak. more fight, and then after that fight, yes. Mike, congratulations. Thank you very much, Jim Gray. Good to see you. Thank you, Mike. For real. We have Mike Tyson here as well. Mike, have you changed your opinion now of Lennox Lewis? Well, no. Um, Believe it or not, I've known Linus for like 15, 16 years. We've always been friends, but in comp but in competition, we in competition, in competition, the best man has to win, and we have to do everything we can. I'm happy for him to give me a fight. The payday was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And if you could be kind enough, I'd love to do it again. I think I could beat you if we try one more time. 
Mike, what gives you any indication that you could beat him after this performance? And was it a lack of quality opponents going into this uh, well, I, that I, hurt you? I explained before I needed two more fights or three more fights to fight him. But um, I believe if I would have took that route, the fight probably would have never happened. He wouldn't have waited for me. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I just take my hand off to you. And he says, please, if you can get, do, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciative. Are you interested in that at all, based on the way you, you yeah, control this fight? you know, I just wanted to complete my legacy. You know, everybody was saying that, you know, this fight is going to uh, count on my legacy. So I just wanted to prove to the people that, you know, I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy tests this man. You prove that right now. You were quite annoyed. You had some very derogatory things to say about Mike coming into this fight. You said you had to win this fight to clean up boxing. Do you feel you've accomplished that? Well, I just showed, I showed boxing, you know, who's the best in the world. I went out there and showed them I'm a pugilist specialist. I can adapt to any style. And, you know, he showed me one style that a lot of people didn't think I was going to be able to deal with. But I was able to deal with it. Uh, a lot of people thought he was going to get away from my jab, but nobody gets away from my jab. Mike, you behave tonight. Everybody. One of his biggest fans, brother. Manny Stewart, say that again. I was telling Mike, I'm still one of his biggest fans. He's given me so many thrills, man. You know, go back to Roderick Moore, you remember? My friend Roderick. Mike, you've given all of us a lot of excitement. Most Thank you. In the last 50 years. Thank you very much. I just, it was just beautiful. I'm just so happy you gave me a chance. Nobody wanted to give me a chance. Don King didn't want to give me a chance. I'm just happy someone gave me a chance. Thank you very much. Champ and Mike, how sorry are you guys that this fight did not occur many years ago when you were at your best and probably you weren't quite as old either? Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, you know, heavyweights, every weights mature at different different times. I would say Mike Tyson matured at 19. He was nothing was standing in his way at that time. He ruled he ruled the planet at that time. But I'm like fine wine. I come along later on, and you know I learned my my art, and w I went along, just took my time, and I came along and just ruled. I'm I'm ruling now. Mike, are you sorry this fight didn't take place years ago? It wasn't meant to be. I've known Little Terry since he was 16, 15 years old. I have mad respect. Everything I said was in um, proposition for promoting the fight. He knows I love him and his mother, and I know if he thinks I don't have respect and don't love him, he's crazy. So you're saying a lot of the behavior, Mike, is just to sell tickets, and, and that doesn't represent well, your true feelings? Well, he knows who I am, and, and he knows I'm not disrespectful. I, I respect this man as a brother. He knew me ever since his friend Bernie and Cuss were together, and he knows I have the much respect for him. Like I said before, he's a magnificent, a prolific fighter, and he should continue fighting. I would just love for him to give me another shot. How important was it for you tonight, Mike, to come out here and be a sportsman and behave in the ring? Oh, no, it was very but I, I said I love and respect him too much to do anything disrespectful to him, and he knows that. And for him to think that is absolutely crazy. Mike, we appreciate your time. You're most gracious in defeat tonight, and I think a lot of fans out there will appreciate the way that you've handled yourself tonight yeah, after some disappointing much. moments and some behavior in the past that hasn't been very well at all. Excuse me. Lennox, okay. what now happens? Mike, I want to start by saying that uh, I've never been more impressed with you as a sportsman than was the case tonight. You fought a clean and honorable fight, and you were utterly sportsmanlike in the ring afterward. Were you conscious all night of the fact that you were on your best behavior? Um, not really, but um, he's a gentleman. I, I knew um, going in this fight, I wasn't fighting a dirty fighter. And the reason I conducted myself like that because um, the fighters I fought both uh, um, Norris and Holyfield, I believe they, they, they fought me a little dirty. And um, I just sometimes I overdid it sometimes. and took it to the next level and made it so apparent and overt that I had the re reputation of a dirty fighter. And um, it's okay. You know, I've been through a lot uh, th with Don King and these guys, and it just really um, transformed my behavior and my conduct. But um, things are going well now, and I'm just see it for the wonderful fight. This guy is, there's no way I could ever be. He's just too big and too strong, and he just fought a, a very, he's a very consummate fighter, and I just appreciate him giving me a shot to fight for the title. That's honorable respect. I think we all knew that in order to beat him, you would have to be fast, you would have to throw combinations, you would have to go to the body and do all the things that made you so great back in the late 1980s. Why weren't you able to do it? Um, he had hurt me early, and I was just trying to keep the pressure, and he has, um, he has kept me hurt from, on from the, from the early to the end of the fight. But he was, fighting, he was fighting great, and he just basically wore me down. Is his right hand the biggest punch you've ever felt? Um, no, I just couldn't see it. You know what I mean? I just couldn't see it. I could take a great shot. I just couldn't see the punch. 
Mike, um, there's there's a great moment in the ring after the fight when during the post-fight interview, you very tenderly reached out and wiped blood from Lennox. Oh, Mike Tyson is having a word with Clifford Atien's father, Thank just you, listening in. Mike, taking time now with the corner of Clifford Atien. Oh, friends like this fight each other. That's how we get yeah, right. Hey, you got to tell me more about this buddy, buddy, buddy McGurk. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Love you, man. All right, God bless you, baby. Thank yeah, Mike. You, Come a long way. Right, I'm trying, okay. sir. You're still doing it. Still Since doing I'm 14. Uh, Mike, you, Clifford sir. Atien pulled you aside, Mike. And he said something to you in your ear that nobody could hear. What exactly was it that he said? Uh, to be honest, I'm on he says you need to stop bullshitting and be serious. You're not serious. That's why you out here playing around. He said the truth. And he is right, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I'm just happy to be back in Memphis and give a decent show. And I'm glad Brother Clifford gave me a fight. And people don't understand the business when you show your love and respect when you fight one another, because that's how we elevate our lifestyle. We take care of our fighters, our family. So we can't say, hey, I'm scared to fight anybody. And closely, we're both Muslim, we're brothers. We owe each other to fight each other, to elevate our life. Mike, were you really sick this week? What was the problem? I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. You did that in sparring? No, I did it. Um, Probably a motorcycle accident. The doctor discovered I was doing my sit-ups, 2,500 a day with my 20-pound weight, and one day I couldn't move anymore. And I asked the doctor, what's wrong? And he said, um, believe it or not, it's wearing your back is broken slightly. So are you in pain right now? Did you take some type of injection? or um, How did no, you, how did you make it to this fight? I can't take an injection. You know you're going to test me. But um, all praise be to Allah. I don't know. I don't even know. I'm as happy that I'm fighting and I punch him well and accurate, that my tr trainer, Freddie Roach, um, Robert Lewis, oh, God, I'm sorry, <laughs> Tyrone Boone. Were Boone. you ready for this fight, Mike? I mean, uh, your trainer advised you four days, Freddie, before the fight, not to fight. Uh, were you ready? No, but I'm obligated and got to be a man and fight. I, I canceled too many fights in my career and I wasn't afraid. I didn't want anybody to think I was afraid. And he needed the money. I'm, I'm always in need of money, and I'm glad the both of us did. I have so much respect for him as a man. You know, he's a good man. I respect him, and he's a friend of mine. And, and I realized um, when Sugar Ray Robinson and Henry Armstrong fought, and that was Robinson's hero, Shook, um, Henry Armstrong went up to him and said, if you're my friend and you care and remind me, you would fight me. You know I need money, and that's how it is with fighters. Fighters, you understand that. Don't say you don't want to fight. And when a man says he doesn't want to fight you, that's disrespecting you because he knows you need you to make a living. And you both <laughs> needed each other in this instance, Mike. Let's take a look if we can here at this fight. Tell us exactly what happened as the slip at the beginning and then you two embraced and went oh, down. Boom. I'm a little rusty. I'm missing. I'm not moving my head. He hit me with, a, I believe, a slight left hook on my eye. Is that what caused the cut, Mike? Is that what caused the cut above your eye? I believe so. The left hook, he hit me, yes. Oh, he did hit you? Yes, he did. Let's take a look now at the slip once again, and then we'll take a look at the knockout. Here it is. I'm setting him up. I'm looking at it. I think this is when we were pushing, though. That was when he was hurt. I pulled him down. He didn't push me. I pulled him down. But he was hurt from that first punch. Now we go he here. Hurt, but I know he was pushing me, so I just... To, to Tell us about the right right here. Down. Okay, and here's the knockout, I'm the right. I'm trying to keep my hands up. I'm moving. I'm trying to get to the side and look for the opening. And I see it. Here it is. Boom. Boom. Straight. Boom. Just like the one Freddie Roach was working now right you've before. hit a lot of people, Mike, and I know it may be a little quick to estimate this. Have you hit anybody harder than that? Well, Where? I don't know because I, I didn't feel a punch, so I have to go around and ask everybody I hit, how did that <laughs> punch feel? Well, you know because you delivered it. Was, it was, it was, was very clean. Oh, I hope I'm glad he didn't hurt yeah. his leg. But I'm just, I was just very happy with the, with the sharp punch, an accurate punch, and praise be to Allah, no one gotten hurt. Mike, we have a couple of other things before we talk about Lennox Lewis, but the country's interested in the tattoo. Why the tattoo, and why so close to the fight? I'm just, um, that's just me who I am. I don't care about no tattoo and fight. People fight, and that just happens. I'm, I'm, we do this. I don't know about no war and all that stuff. This is just what I do. I fight for a living. I'm in a hurt business. And no one should care if I get hurt, if I die in the ring. Because this is what we do. It's what we do. That's just people fighting out in the stands. They didn't get enough of you, I guess. But let's keep you here, Mike. 
Lennox Lewis will be next. It'll be in in June. What do you think will be different this time? Well, I'll be more confident this time. I'll, and, I, and, I, and to be honest, I don't believe I'm ready to fight him at this moment. I'm not going to lie to myself. I'm not going to lie to the public. I need more fights, and I'm not interested in getting beat up again. So what will you do in between now and then to get ready if you're not interested in getting beaten up again so it doesn't I'll, end the same way? I'll leave here and go right to the gym in a week later, continue my exercise, and just continue to go training. And hopefully, you know, it's... It's all praise be to God. I don't know. I don't even know if I want to fight no more. If I have to fight Lennox Lewis, my next fight is no way I have to continue fighting. You don't know if you want to fight Lewis or you don't know if you want to fight after that? Well, I don't know. I don't want to fight Lewis right this moment. But um, if, I, if I'm capable to get two or three more fights, probably two, I'll fight him right away. My only problem with Lewis, you want to understand, if I've never been absent for five years, Holyfield, all these guys that beat me, they would never have a career. It was all in God's plan to take care of them. All I loved them, he put his, uh, Holyfield may say, Jesus, they love him, they put their arm around him, put him in their bosom, and they, they, they elevate their lives. But eventually, I'll continue to, yes, um, training and bring my life together. I just want to get my shit together. I'm so messed up, man. I just need to get my life together, brother. All right, Mike, we thank you for your time and congratulations thank on you, the fight. Thank you, too, sir. Thank, thank you. you. All right, let's go down to Steve Alpert. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Mike, first, let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to have continued, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because um, I got the, the ability to stay in shape, but I don't got the fight in guts, I don't think, anymore. When did you recognize that? At what part of the fight? I don't know, early into the fight. Um, I'm just sorry I let everybody down. I mean, I just don't have this in my heart anymore. Did you feel as though you had it coming into the fight? Um, no, I'm, I'm just fighting to take care of my, um, my bills, basically. I don't have the stomach for this kind of no more. I got, I'm more, I'm more um, conscious of my children and those guys looking at my parents. I'm just, I don't have, I don't have that ferocity. I'm not an animal anymore. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, that's most likely. I'm not going to fight again. I'm not going to dis I'm not going to disrespect the sport anymore by losing to this caliber of fighters. Jeff, why did you decide to step in at this point and tell referee Joe Cortez that you didn't want him to continue? I told everybody from day one when I came here that I'm not here. I love Mike, and um, that's enough. I could see that you know he done his best for those rounds. And listen, he wouldn't have done six rounds of like that. You know, six months ago, 12 months ago, he done great rounds. I'm so proud of him today. And um, I want him to. I want him not just to. Get, we lost, but hey, a lot of great fighters lost the last fight. Jeff Fennick did. I want him to go out happy, proud, and able to look after his children. That's what he can do today. Mike, how difficult is this for you emotionally and mentally t to see this come to an end after well, after the career you've had? Not much because I don't have any desire for this anymore. So I basically don't care much about the sports. I'm just, um, I'm sorry to disappoint the people. I wish they can get their money back some kind of way. You seemed as though in, in the sixth round, like you were fighting for your career not to end with the headbutt. Was it intentional? No, but I'm just in there fighting and I'm a little desperate, so I'm trying to win. Mike, a lot of people wonder what, what you'll do now with your life. Boxing has been your whole life. Well, I'm sure I'll find something to do. Boxing doesn't define me. I'm just sorry to disappoint the people in the city. I know I, I didn't have it in my stomach no more, but I was in dire needs to take care of my life. Is Kevin McBride a good fighter, or was he just somebody caught, who caught you now at, at the end of your career? Well, you know, I can't take anything away from Kevin, but you guys know the situation. People in the boxing world know the situation. I know you've lost tonight. I know it's difficult, but are you in a better place in your head mentally at this portion of your life than you've been in the past? Oh, definitely. I have different friends, different associates. I don't even associate with my old crowd and associates no more. I don't get involved with that. I'm just I'm in a different world right now, a totally different spirit. Mike, we appreciate your time. It's been great to watch your career. It's been up and down. We've seen a lot of things out of you, and tonight we appreciate your sportsmanship and the way you've handled this. Thank you very much, Tim Gray. All right, Mike Tyson. Just Jeff. remember, there's 18,000 people here to see a legend, and he went out as a legend. That's absolutely true. As we bring Kevin McBride in, Mike, thank Thanks you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, you're a legend, and I appreciate the fight, man. Good man. God bless. Thank you. Kevin, what was your thought process coming into this fight? What did you expect to be the outcome? I thought Mike was going to be fast like he was, and then... Uh, you know, I stuck to fight with him a bit too much, and uh, you know he's a warrior, and uh, 
I, I respect the man and I'm a warrior and I just, you know, I come in a lot of heart from Ireland, you know. And I, you know. Were you surprised that he didn't come out like he has in the past, just throwing punches and, and trying to intimidate his opponents as, as all of the tapes would have indicated to you? Well, you know, Tyson's a clever man. He's trying to look for the opening and uh, thank God uh, he didn't get the punch on and uh, I, you know, retaliated it good. So, uh, you know, he's a good fighter. Uh, Kevin, stay with us. Mike, I want to ask you, why did you come out so passive? We're so used to seeing you run across the ring in your first barrage of punches in the first round. Why did you change tonight after a career of that? I, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not taking nothing away from Kevin. I don't love this no more. I'm just in here. Um, I, I just, I don't love this no more. I haven't loved fighting since 1919, 1990. Um, but Kevin, congratulations on your career and good luck. Now, we should have to make a lot of money. How much, how much were you able to use? Goody Petronelli getting in here as well. How much were you able to use your weight advantage to be inside on Mike and to hang on him? Uh, the, I had a lot of weight on him, and uh, I just, you know, Every day I'm learning something different, and it's great to fight Mike because he's, uh, you know, he's a great warrior, and it's good to have him under the belt. And you know, you just told him he is a legend. What will this mean to you, particularly when you go back to Ireland? Oh, it's great. You know, it's great for Ireland. You know, um, Ireland were crying out for a heavyweight for a long time, and I'm a legitimate uh, contender, not another pretender. And I want to. Uh... Mike, thank you. We appreciate it. Okay.